What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite guns, maybe not ever, but certainly of 2023. Today we're gonna be going over my favorite guns of 2023, and I wanted to bring you along for the ride and talk about some of the things that I really liked about them, some of the things that I didn't, and some of the guns that maybe surprised me. I wanted to wrap up the year, it's toward the end of the year now, and it's almost January, and it'll be a whole new year of guns when SHOT Show comes out. And I already did the top five best guns of 2023 that I thought would be best for everybody. And in this video, I just wanted to talk about what my personal favorites are. I have a tendency to have certain biases and today I'm just gonna let my freak flag fly and tell you about them. I'm not really gonna order them one through 10, let's say, but I am gonna leave my two favorites for the very top. Now, before we get into the video, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys that we have a lot of the guns and ammo that we use on the channel. And I hope you guys like our honest content. We try to make stuff for you and not the industry. So if you're into that, make sure to go to the link in the description and sign up for Patreon. Also in that description is the link to a local homeless shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. So please go down and donate to those kids. Now, let's get right into it with number 10, the Palmetto 5.7. Now, this isn't my absolute favorite gun, but it certainly isn't bad. The Palmetto 5.7 brings a lot of gun for the money. A five inch 5.7 by 28 pistol with a whole gang of capacity, 23 rounds per magazine, and the gun comes in at around four or 500 bucks, depending on where you get it, depending on what features you get it with, which is extremely excellent. 5.7 is a very flat shooting, low recoil caliber that's kind of thin. She's on Jenny Craig, so you can fit a lot in the magazine and you can get a lot of capacity for a very small gun. Thin, super lightweight, still about the same weight of a Glock 17, maybe even a Glock 19. You get a full-size trigger guard, a good trigger, and some decent steel sights right out of the factory. Glock should really take note. We also get good slide serrations, and so far, the gun has been very reliable. The only thing not to love about this is the ammo price of 5.7, but once you shoot it, you won't even notice till it's over and you gotta buy more ammo because this thing shoots super flat, super accurately, and it's just so much fun to shoot. And for the price that it is, and you get the features and the looks and the reliability and the accuracy, what an excellent gun. I personally love shooting 5.7, so that's why I made it on this list. In at number nine, we're gonna talk about the big dog. <laughs> Chorus Raging Hunter. Now mine is in 44 Magnum, and I love 44 Magnum as a caliber. A lot of people think you can't defend your home with 44, but you can, as long as you can shoot. You only get six rounds, but they certainly do make an impact. Now this has an eight inch barrel, it is comp, so very light recoil on the 44 Magnums, and especially if you use 44 Special, feels like you're shooting nothing at all. Long sight radius, you can add an optic and a light if you so choose, and it has a dual lock system on it, so you can feel safe while you shoot it. The cylinder is really well done. The quality on these are a lot higher, in my opinion, than what you get on a standard Taurus. I've seen a couple of these now, and all of them have been pretty excellent, and I have a few buddies that have these, and they really like them. Uh, features always kill it on the Taurus, but build quality can be somewhat of an issue, and that's probably what you're gonna sacrifice with this over something like a Colt Anaconda, although not so much with Colt these days. <laughs> So overall, for a price under a thousand, not only do you get the comp barrel, you get the eight inch barrel, you get the dual lock system, you get a rubber grip, which helps a lot with the recoil. You actually get a really good trigger as well. You can see here, this is the double action, really, really smooth, and then single action, light and crisp. Would make an excellent deer hunting gun in my personal opinion, especially if you put a dot on it, you could hit a deer like 100 yards with this fucking thing. Uh, super, super accurate and good lethality, looks great and a pretty decent price. And personally, I just love shooting it. In at number eight, the Canik MC9. This is the girl I thought about, but didn't pull the trigger on. It came really close to be my new concealed carry gun, although it just couldn't supplant the Shield Plus for me. Um, pre cock striker trigger like the P99, really good. Comes with a good magazine capacity of uh, 12 rounds. And then you get 15 or you get bigger ones as well. Comes with an optic mounting system, uh, steel sights, good serrations, lightweight, uh, very, very thin, just like a standard micro nine. And one of the best concealed carry guns you can buy today, in my opinion, especially for the money. These come around $400, which is absolutely excellent, uh, considering that you get uh, ambi controls, you get a swappable magazine release, and you get, again, that pre cock striker fired trigger. Uh, a lot of features for low money. It also looks pretty good, too. Now, I'm a sucker for a Smith, so I keep my Shield Plus, although you're certainly not unarmed with this, and I absolutely love this gun, and it's certainly one of the better guns that came out 
over the past few years for uh, size to weight to cost ratio. So I love the gun and I think it's a great choice and I actually really like shooting it unlike a lot of Micro 9s. So that's why I made it on this list. At number seven, and this is gonna surprise a lot of you, but it is the DWX. Now the DWX full size and compact, I got both of them this year. Although I do like the DWX full size a little bit more. I felt as though compared to at least another gun on this list that you'll see pretty soon, the DWX compact lacked in features and was more expensive. I feel like this gun shines in a large frame and I think it shines even more if you get it milled for an optic. Although I wish it came with an optic right out of the factory, especially for the going price of $2,000. Although the full size does come with a light rail and for self-defense that's mandatory for me. That's why I don't like the compact quite as much. It comes with good serrations and it is the love child of a CZ and a 1911. The first gun I've ever tried and I've always wanted to have a CZ grip with a 1911 uh, flat face style trigger and I absolutely love that because I have long fingers and I can change the uh, length of the trigger now and I can make it longer and it fits my finger better. So I actually shoot this really well. I love this gun and it certainly is one of my favorite guns. However, I do feel like it's pretty expensive, uh, more uh, expensive than what most people can handle. But if you do get one, you're gonna absolutely fucking love it. Now you have to remember that compared to Staccato's, it's actually a little bit cheaper. Looks really nice as well. Although I did find a couple of guns this year that I think I liked a little bit better. Now in at number six, the first carbine of the list, the Smith & Wesson FPC. Now the Smith & Wesson FPC was a gun that when I initially got in my FFL, I thought it was a bit of a joke. <laughs> I didn't really like how it looked and I didn't really understand the philosophy of use. Although now after I have 2000 rounds through the gun and I beat the absolute shit out of it, I get it. It's an ultra lightweight pistol caliber carbine that takes what the sub 2000 should have been and makes it what it is. It is 16 inch nine millimeter PCC with an M-lock rail that is durable, reliable, quick, and really, really easy to use. And on top of that, instead of folding up the top, it folds to the side, which doesn't interfere with optics or anything like that. Now we absolutely beat the crap out of this and we uh, did mud tests, we did drop tests, I hit it against a bunch of barrels and we did all kinds of stuff to this and it kept running. And because of that, I actually really trust the gun now and I like it a lot more. It's my personal favorite folding carbine uh, out of the Sub 2000, the Pivot, uh, the folding AR. We've done a lot of folding things this year because of the pistol brace band. Uh, people have been getting into folding guns a lot, which makes sense. And I think this is probably the best option or at least the best option for me. It's the one I like shooting the most. I actually even like shooting it over the new Smith, which is, I forget what it is now, the response. Just because this one does the same thing and it folds. And I just like the ergonomics of this one better. It shoots really fast, it shoots really soft. And I'm just a big fan. And coming in at around $500, man, tough to beat. Now at number five, I wanna talk about a gun that I never expected to be on my favorite list. And I wanna talk about the Springfield Echelon. The Springfield Armory Echelon is one of my favorite pistols of the year. And I can't believe how much I like shooting this. Uh, it has a really good trigger, striker fired polymer frame pistol, pretty standard issue for the industry these days. And I thought it was gonna be another one of those guns where, eh, fuck it, who cares? However, this one really changed my mind. Uh, we also did a torture test on this, even more so than we did the FPC, and it passed with flying colors. Comes in at a pretty good price, around 600 bucks, has good stippling, a bunch of different back straps, obviously has the fire control unit in it, more of a upgraded, better SIG 320 in my personal opinion. Now, I'm not a fan of Springfield as a company, but when a product's good, a product's good, and this is good. Comes with great sights, great slide serrations, the recoil and pulse is very low, super reliable, super accurate gun, and quick as well. Also comes with kind of a revolutionary mounting system, or at least a different mounting system for optics, which I do prefer over over some standard optics mounting systems like the uh, Glock MOS system, for example. You put like 30 optics on this, which is really cool. Uh, it comes with a good capacity and a good price, and I would consider this really the pinnacle of what a polymer frame striker fired gun can do these days. Uh, I would say this and maybe the Walter PDP are my two personal favorite Glock clones right now. I love this gun and I'm gonna keep shooting it. Like I said, we have 2,500 rounds, 2,000 something like that through this now and it's ran excellent and uh i'm gonna keep going in at number four is going to be the sig mcx spear now i don't have the spear on me because we gave it away just one of my lucky followers which uh hopefully you're enjoying that bad boy but i absolutely loved it i actually have the spear lt and i have the spear lt 300 blackout although i haven't done full testing on it yet but obviously i liked it because i bought several other versions the sig spear in 308 the big boy was my personal favorite 
rifle of the year and man do i wish i could afford one but they're seven thousand dollars <laughs> So I don't have one, I can't show you. But imagine it's in my hands, you can see the filler. Um, but uh, we shot a thousand rounds through that gun and it was my favorite 308 I think I've ever fired. I even liked it a little bit more than the uh, SCAR 17, which is my OG. And I like the capability of a 7.62, I like the lethality, I like the fact that, you know, a lot of people shit on 308 these days, but it's absolutely great for hunting. It's a heavy bullet, it goes through, has good penetration on barriers. Uh, might not be as good a long range precision as like a 6.5 Creedmoor, but for me personally in my applications i'm more of a zero to 500 yard guy and i'll take the penetration and i'll take the cheap ammo and i'll take the uh, lethality on target and i like the six beer and 308 so much that i'll probably buy one eventually but it's a piston gun it's a 16 inch barrel and it's going to be the new military rifle at least for the army and it's going to be in like 277 fury or something but civilians we only get 308 right now that being said, I don't think it's a bad thing because the ammo is relatively affordable and you can find it everywhere. You can get a folding stock if you want, which is super cool. The gun's accurate out to at least 500 yards because we were hitting 500 yards with it. Yep. Nice. And you can even build drill with it because the recoil impulse is more than manageable, especially for a 308. I think it's a great zero to maybe even a thousand yard caliber and platform. Now I know people don't like when I say 308 can go a thousand yards, but it can. Uh, the people do it on YouTube all the time and now does it take some skill? Yes, but so does everything else. So if some people can do it, everyone can do it. So I just say zero to a thousand. Realistically for me personally, probably zero to 500 because if I had one right now, I'd probably be running a one to eight. That's how I preferred to run it. Or maybe an EOTech with a magnifier because it'd be a very formidable home defense weapon. But mostly it's just a lot of fun. It's got the cool factor of being chosen by the military. It looks super cool. It has tons of features on it that I wish my SCAR 17 had right out of the factory, like an M-Lock rail, more vertical grip on it. The folding stock works super well. And overall the gun, is very very cool that being said it's super expensive but it doesn't stop me from liking it now into number three getting back a little more affordable we're gonna be talking about the m p 5.7 uh, i like 5.7 and this is currently my personal favorite it comes with a threaded barrel the temple barrel system which decreases the recoil even over the palmetto i prefer the trigger a little more i prefer the ergonomics a little more the grip i like a lot the serrations on the uh, slide is amazing very thin very light just like the palmetto obviously takes similar capacity magazines 22 and it's just the lowest recoiling pistol i've ever shot that isn't a 22. you can shoot it super fast super accurate and uh it it really is an amazing achievement in my personal opinion i like this caliber not only just for me but i like it for a lot of people if you're sensitive to recoil this is a great gun 22 rounds of 5.7 is going to do the job and uh, not only that but like i said around 600 dollars mark comes milled with an optic right out of the factory which is cool steel uh, three dot sight which is really nice 5.7 is cool to suppress so you can do that with your threaded barrel it comes with a light rail and again the trigger is probably the best trigger i've ever had on a smith so i wish the uh the polymer framed on uh, nines come with a trigger like this but watch this now mine's really broken in too by the way because we have a lot of rounds for this now that is super impressive especially from a stock smith and wesson so overall i just think it's the best shooting smith i've ever tried so how can it not be on the list all right man this is a tough decision but these for sure were my two favorite guns i've shot this year one is obtainable and one not so much um one i own and one i don't own because it's so unattainable and i suppose because of that alone i'll put it at number two the terran tactical pit viper now i know that's going to be pretty controversial because there's been a few people on the internet who don't like it so much i guess even though it looks like they never even shot the thing but i did shoot the thing we shot a thousand rounds through it and my buddy nick who also shoots pretty well shot another thousand rounds through it and the gun ran absolutely excellent it is a 2011 with i think a four and a half inch barrel with a pin comp on it and it comes out to about five inches and it still has that butler cut that looks super cool uh, it is the non-optics ready version of the Sand Viper, which won uh, two gun nationals this year, which is pretty awesome. Uh, competitive shooters use the optic version a lot, and the Pit Viper is the one with iron sights, because that was requested, I guess, by Keanu, because obviously the gun's famous, because it was in John Wick 4. And I do believe it is the best gun 
John Wick has ever used. Now I know John Wick is a fictional character, but the Pit Viper is certainly better than every other John Wick gun I've ever shot. And I've shot a lot of them actually. <laughs> and we did give the Pit Viper away as well, which is why you don't see it here. That is a $7,000 2011 that comes with all the bells and whistles you could ever imagine, except for an optics mount. However, if you want the optics mount, you can just go with the Sand Viper. They do the exact same thing. It's just not the one from the movie. And I prefer the one from the movie. Got good stippling, got good serrations on it. Absolutely no recoil in the most in insane trigger that you've ever tried in your life. Uh, Atlas Gunworks quality, SVI quality for sure. The uh, gunsmiths over there at Terran obviously know what they're doing because it had like a 1.2 pound trigger pull. Honestly, Nick and I had to get used to shooting it because it was so light. Once we got used to it, obviously that is a huge advantage because you need no trigger trigger control whatsoever to shoot it accurately. You could hit 50, 100, 150 yards. The most stupid accurate gun I've ever shot besides my Atlas Gunworks, which also come in at around the $7,000 price point. Uh, Custom 2011s have a way of making you look better than you actually are because they've shortest reset, uh, lightest trigger, best ergonomics, lowest recoil, and a super high capacity with super quick reloads because obviously it has a magwell and it has the uh, grip modifications and all the fun stuff that you would want on a race pistol. Add the fact that it was in the movie, used by Keanu, and obviously it's a Terran Tactical gun, which I have a little bit of a soft spot for. Uh, I've always liked them in John Wick. I really, really like how they look. And uh, Terran is a legendary shooter, but I absolutely love the gun myself. I just think it's so freaking expensive that most people can't get a hold of it. Obviously, because I don't fucking have one. <laughs> I got a, got a hold of one for a giveaway and then gave it away, and I obviously don't have the money to buy a new one. Uh, that being said, it is an absolutely excellent gun, and I would be remiss if I didn't add it to this list because I had so much fun shooting it. I'm not going to say any honorable mentions because there's just too many to remember. Canic Steel Frame, Desert Eagle. I've shot a whole bunch of cool guns this year, but the clear number one for me is going to be this easy shout out to compact now this easy shadow 2 compact i think is my perfect gun i i've shot a shadow 2 in competition for years i love them i think they're the best gun for the money i love cz i like the system in general i'm a huge fan of the double single action guns just because that's what i grew up using and i like 1911s a lot as well but as far as anything other than 1911, I'm picking a CZ-75 variant. I think they're the most reliable competition gun you can get. I think they have some of the lowest recoil you can get. And these guns come in for like $1,500. Come with an optics mounting system, a fiber optic front with a blacked out rear. Obviously, I don't have the blacked out rear on there right now because we have an aftermarket optics mounting system. Uh, light rail on the bottom, which the DWX does not have. Obviously, this comes in way less than the DWX as well. And you can use this boy, bad boy in competition if you like. Now I like it for a carry gun even more than single action because the double action kind of gives you a safety for your junk. You have that long trigger pull uh, before it's going to go off and not only does that help with safety with appendix carry because you have the long trigger pull but you can also place your thumb on the hammer when you reholster and you can make the gun a lot more safe when you reholster since that's generally when accidents happen in the first place. Now, I like it a lot for dry fire practice as well, because if you can dry fire uh, against the wall with a long double action pull, you can do it with the short single action. And that is sort of how I train myself to shoot, as I just spent hours and hours and hours in my basement uh, pulling this double action pull to the rear on my original shadow over and over again in a light switch. And then that's how I translate to shooting targets at 100, 150, or even 300 yards with a handgun, which I have on my Instagram. Um, dry fire practice will make you a better shooter, especially if you apply it to real life shooting as well. Like you dry fire all week and then vet it with a weekend of shooting at the range. But as far as features to money to shootability goes, I think this is one of, if not the most shootable compact gun I've ever tried. I think for $1,500, it's absolutely excellent. I like the uh, internal slide rails a lot because it gives you less mass and it gives you a lower bore axis. You also have a large dust cover on there and you have the 25 lines per inch checker in the front and rear. And then you also have the uh, aluminum grips. So it's, it really is just a little shadow. And I was worried they would do a lot of different stuff to this to make it more ca capable for carry, I guess. Usually they make a heavier trigger. Usually they do lots of other things. And in this case, they just miniaturized the Shadow 2. And I think they made the perfect gun for me. Overall, as far as shootability and feature set and looks compared to the price, I think this beats the shit out of the DWX. And obviously it's almost as shootable as the Pit Viper for only $1,500. And I absolutely love the gun. Um, we did a torture test of this. We did a 2,000 round review. 
came out with shining colors and I wouldn't think for a second not to use this for home defense, self-defense or concealed carry. And you could also take this bad boy out and you could shoot at your local match and do extremely well and buy its big brother and then you'll have the exact same ergonomics, exact same trigger pull. Man, what a pair that would be. I know, because that's what I use. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support Oklahoma Shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.